Hey, welcome Neo Vimmers um, to this uh, edition of what I'm affectionately calling the Neo Vim Stand Up. And what I'm going to be doing here is just speed running uh, something, no edits, one shot, and just show you uh, in this episode how to manually manage your own plugins using tools that already exist on your system. And just as a quick uh, side note there is this is mostly for exercise and to, to, to learn more about how NeoVim works. There's some really great uh, plugin managers that uh, exist out there that you should probably be using instead of this. And we'll talk about some drawbacks at the very end. All right, so if you're gonna manage your own plugins, uh, the, the first thing you need to know is where does NeoVim store plugins? So what I've done here is I've set up an empty directory here, test vim. I've gone ahead and set um, nvim app name to test vim, and that is just telling NeoVim to look for config files in this directory. That is so that if I open up NeoVim, it's just gonna have a blank slate, uh, zero config NeoVim, so we can do everything from scratch. We're not getting polluted with anything I have in my daily driver config. Um, so where does NeoVim put plugins? So there's this uh, help page that is particularly particularly useful for this called the uh, runtime search path. And I can just complete that. All right, so we want to read here what's of use to us. Where does NeoVim store config files? NeoVim searches for runtime files in all paths in the runtime path and all pack star start starters. <laughs> That's a mouthful. So as far as this directory goes, there, no absolute path is given. It turns out that NeoVim looks for plugins in this directory in one of the directories it searches uh, containing a pattern like this is your config directory. So we can create a, um, we can create this scaffolding in our config directory, store plugins there and NeoVim will load them. So let's go ahead and um, uh, copy this and let's go ahead and create this uh, scaffolding ourselves. So I'm going to just do make dir dash p to, to create the scaffolding and um, get rid of these uh, escape characters. Okay, it looks like I'm going to have to type that out. So make dir dash p pack star start star. Now we don't want to include the stars. So what do those stars signify? That means that NeoVim will look for any directory matching this pattern. So what I like to call, you can call this anything. You can call this foo, or you could have different plugins stored in different places. I like to call this local. And that last star is where the plugins will live. So each plugin might live uh, as a d direct descendant of this start directory. So if we go ahead and make that. Now, what, what do you use to um, populate that? Well, you just clone your... Um, plugins directly into that directory. So we could, um, we could, and we're not gonna do this, we could do this, uh, git clone, um, does this work? Okay, cool. Clone LSP config, and we could say clone the LSP config to pack local start nvim LSP config. And that's all well and good, except that, um, then we have to kind of remember what commit was checked out. And, you know, if we are rebuilding a system, like, you know, this laptop dies and I, you know, I'm starting a new one from scratch, my config could break because I depend maybe on an old version of LSP config. So we're, this is something we're not going to do. What we're gonna do um, first, we'll leave that commented out. I'm gonna use submodules, get submodules to track what com commit, uh, a given commit is checked out and that way I could reproduce my config on any other system. Um, we'll talk, like I said, we'll talk about drawbacks at the end. So let's go ahead and initialize a git repository here and then we can, let's just morph this command. Instead of git clone, we're gonna change this to git submodule add and we're gonna add this at the br uh, branch master and then we tell get submodules that we want to use. This is the repo URL and this is the clone directory. So if we go ahead and run that, that will, that just cloned the um, plugin into my uh, submodules uh, or into that, that folder as a submodule, get submodule. So what's great about this, if we restart NeoVim, um, 
then we can, I don't know why I did the dash dash there. That's just habit from using my config. Then if we uh, require LSP config, if we did everything right, NeoVim will be able to look up where that plugin is, find it, and it did, no errors. So we can use this in our config. So let's um, edit init.lua, and we could do this, require LSP config, and set up uh, Lua language server, set up that's something I already have installed on the system. Um, this will work. By the way, there's newer ways to manage LSP, but this is a contrived example, so we're just gonna roll with this. So now if we open up um, init.lua, um, the uh, LSP server has already picked up that this is uh, a, a Lua file. So if we go LSP init, uh, info rather, then we see that everything's working as expected because we set up uh, uh, plugins and we're managing them ourselves. Um, so now, now how do we track, like how do we lock our dependencies? Well, it turns out Git submodules do that too. So if I open up lazy Git, you can see that these uh, that that specific <laughs> commit has being tracked as a submodule. This just that's just what Git submodules do. They track what external repos you depend on and what given commit in that repo you're depending on, so that you can reproduce this later on. And I can commit this, and. That'll work. I can go rebuild another system right now using this config and the power of Git submodules. Okay, so I did a few things there that are undesirable. Um, one of them is that if you did not notice, um, that uh, plugin is not being lazy loaded. If we look at the init Lua, the um, I'm just assuming that uh, plugin is available right out of the gate. So this is one of the first drawbacks of this approach. Doing just what I did purely with no amend, uh, no modifications, this could potentially hurt your startup time. Um, just be aware of that. Um, there is a way around this. Um, you can implement lazy loading yourself, which is an involved thing, and uh, other plugin managers um, give you a lot for free out of the box with this. But uh, let's talk about that real quick. So where I was putting these, um, if we look again, was in pack um, local start. Well, if I were to move these uh, plugins to pack local opt, then these become optional plugins that I can load on demand. So I can implement my own uh, lazy loading myself if I like. So here's the deal though. So now I just broke my config because at this point, since, that, since LSP config, is a uh, optional plugin now, or an optional package. Uh, now this will not work because I just assume that as soon as I start up, it's it's uh, there. And so indeed, if we open up, reopen our config, that will not work. So let's go fix that. This is how you would implement lazy loading. Let's just say at some point I decide that I should load LSP config. What you would need to call is vim.cmd pack add nvim lsp config and you might wonder so why is this one nvim lsp config and why is this one just lsp config well this is the name of the lua module this is the name of the directory you want vim to go load um, you can read more about um, pack add uh, here so anyways if i do this now now things should work again and the config loads i get a warning because LSP is enabled for this file um, using the old way. And um, there we have it. We're managing our own plugins. Um, this is uh, to actually make this la lazy loading, you would want to probably put the pack add in an auto command um, or just go use one of the plugin managers that give you all of this for free. But now you know a little bit more about how plugins work in NeoVim. So that was a speed run, no breaks, no edits. Um, if you like this kind of content, I'm planning on making more NeoVim content in the future and uh, encourage me maybe with a like and, uh, and, and some engagement uh, comments and tell me what you learned or maybe something that I missed. I would love to learn uh, from you all about how you manage your plugins. So with that, have a good day. Later.